So you're sitting there and procrastinating on actual studying by looking up videos on how to study for boards. At least that's what I did when I was in your shoes. I remember scouring the web, looking for any kind of information about study plans, ideas, rituals, secret resources, and what scores I needed to get in order to guarantee I passed boards from people that were actually successful at it. I remember not finding much concrete info, so I figured since I'm now a licensed CRNA, I'd share my experience in the hopes of reducing some of that stress. If you just want to skip to the part where I talk specifically about board prep, please go to the timestamp in the description. Otherwise, I will share with you my long journey to passing boards and 100 questions on my first try. So what did preparing for boards look like? Well, it started over a year before the exam. One of my teachers would tell me to do something board prep related every day, and I think that's pretty sound advice. A little backstory, my program was more front loaded with the first two semesters being completely didactic and the third semester splitting time between clinicals three days a week and classes two days a week. So you were still preparing for challenge and tests while also acclimating to the clinical setting, which involved doing care plans, learning what's expected of you and attempting to master skills that you've only read about. A quick side note, I think one of the best ways to ensure success in the program, besides studying a little bit every day, is to keep one or two activities that you love in your schedule. It can be extremely tempting to just devote yourself completely to anesthesia. At least that's how I felt, especially since any time I did anything that wasn't anesthesia related, I felt immensely guilty. But anesthesia school is a marathon, not a race, and having one or two activities I really enjoyed that weren't anesthesia kept me from complete burnout. So make sure to keep one or two of those interests alive during anesthesia school, especially something physical like walking or yoga. Okay, back to my story. So during the third semester, I was really just trying to survive. I didn't really worry about boards or anything graduation adjacent. I was just trying to not get kicked out of clinicals and pass the next test. I really started to become a little more aware of boards my fourth semester, since at that point we had covered all of the serious classes, like the farm and the pathophys. So I decided to go ahead and start making my way through Apex. One thing I have to say is that I'm an extremely bad procrastinator, or a good one depending on how you look at it which means that I have to put safeties in place in order to get myself to actually do the tasks I have to do. I was so tired after clinicals that I knew if I went home, no studying would happen. So instead, after clinicals, I would go straight to the library or to Starbucks and work on my Apex modules for an hour before the gym. I assigned myself a module a week starting that semester, so I would go through Apex with the workbook and that we had to print out and write in and turn in for evaluation from our director. I never found the workbook helpful because I hate reading my own handwriting, but the process of writing out the notes may have been helpful on some level that I'm unaware of. After Apex was complete, I went through the Nago Hat lecture videos, Farm 1 and Farm 2, and read through his accompanying PDFs, which I found immensely helpful since Nago Hat lectures in a conversational manner, and I intend to understand and retain that kind of information the best. Once I finished that, I went back to Apex and started going through it again, this time in a way that I felt benefited me. I went through Apex and highlighted everything I didn't know, and you'd be surprised how much information you've passively absorbed by that point. So I went through Apex completely a second time, with emphasis on what I didn't know, and I would stop and research those parts and try to understand them to the best of my abilities at that time. I would also still assign myself a module a week. A big hurdle for me was the anesthesia machine, since that is just rogue memorization. At this point, I had started to use the Apex flashcards. Unfortunately, Apex doesn't allow you to utilize space repetition with their flashcards, but there are apps and ways of doing that if you're interested, and that's all I'm going to say on that. The Apex flashcards were immensely helpful in cementing information in my mind. I would set my daily limit to about 30 new cards a day, and then do the repeat cards however many were assigned that day. Semesters 5 through 7 consisted of external rotations, such as OB, hearts, peds, neuro, trauma. It was a way of guaranteeing we got the required numbers that we weren't exposed to as much at our primary site. During that time, I mainly worked on my flashcards and the question of the day resources. I created decks specific to my rotations, such as pediatric dosing, pediatric conditions, heart-related medications. I wanted to take a bit of a break from Apex to evaluate how successful going through all of Apex had been. Towards the end of the sixth semester, we had to take our first C exam. My school required we take the C exam twice, once in the fall and once in the spring read right before boards. I decided not to cram for the first C exam in order to get a true feel for where I was at, since for us, it didn't really matter how we scored. 
My first score was 437, with equipment instrumentation score being 409. I was told I needed to bring that one up to 420. The rest of the categories were good, with my highest being anesthesia for surgical procedures and special populations, 461, and I truly don't have an earthly idea why that was my highest score. Our benchmark was 440, so I felt pretty good about where I was, and I felt that I was on track. So I just continued to do my daily flashcards, my question of the day, and I started going through Apex a third time, focusing on the concepts I was shaky on and transcribing the most important ideas to a Word document. That way, all of the information was in one place and not spread out through multiple modules and multiple web pages, multiple PDFs. During the last semester, I took a month off from Apex modules and just focused on my flashcards and the question of the day resources. I learned best through answering questions and then working to understand the rationale, so that's what I focused on. I prepared for the second C exam by signing up for Apex's study plan. I think it was four weeks, so I just followed the plan going through all of the modules according to their timeline doing all of the practice questions. As far as the modules went, I focused on the material that I still didn't feel good about that I had highlighted a second time. Also, during the password protected exams, I would go back and highlight the questions so that I would have an idea of what was important. I also noticed that there were a few questions in the proctored exams where I would not have known the answer if I hadn't done the Apex flashcards. My second C score was 487, so I had made benchmark. So this is the moment of the actual board prep. Everything before this was preparing me for this. It's a quick rundown of what my board prep looked like during the two weeks I took to prepare. I'll go into the actual details in a couple of slides, but I wanted to just give a general overview. I prepared over the course of 15 days. I had repeatedly heard and read that the longer you wait to sit for boards, the lower chances of passing, with the sweet spot being around two weeks. So I sat for boards 15 days after being released. The days before graduation, I reset my entire deck and did 300 cards a day for five days which made sure that I had read every card again and had recategorized it based on how well I knew the information. Once I was released for boards, I did all the cards due that day, one module of Apex per day, 10 minutes of calculation practice, and one to two Prodigy mock exams. I also did all of the Prodigy questions available on the topics I felt weakest on. Here is a screenshot of the calculation tool and where to find it on Apex. And here is a calendar breakdown of what my prep looked like. I transcribed this from my written calendar and included the Prodigy mock exam scores I had recorded. I'm including these because it would make me feel better when I knew if I was at least in the middle of the pack with my scores when I was taking these tests. I also incorporated the Apex domain exams, abbreviated as D1 and so on, on this calendar. I would just take them whenever I had a bit of extra time at the end of the day. They were extremely difficult, and I think my average scores were 40 to 50%. After I had finished all of the Apex modules, and I felt I was ready to test myself, I took our last password-protected Apex exam. I scored an 81% on it, so I felt I was as ready as I was ever going to be. I read my high-yield material and did the remaining amount of Prodigy questions the day before boards, and then I took boards. It was an incredibly awful experience. I knew for sure I had failed when the computer had turned off at 100 questions, but somehow I had passed. And it's okay if your computer doesn't turn off in the first 100 questions. It's okay if you take all the questions. It's okay if you take all of the questions and you don't pass your first time. A friend of mine took all 170 questions their first time and didn't pass. They had to contact the director and they were so embarrassed about it having happened to them. And in that moment, I think having someone to talk to and someone to help you keep moving forward is incredibly helpful. So if you feel that you're close enough with one of your classmates for them to help you prepare for boards again, please reach out because they would be happy to help you succeed. One cool thing I learned from that experience is that you don't need your director to tell your score. You can actually log into the NBCRNA and view your score from there. Apex will ask you what your score is and then devise a study plan for you based on that score. And here's a little screen grab of where to find all of your exam results. As you can see here, if you pass, it just says pass. But if you don't pass, that's when it will report a number that you'll then share with Apex. My friend did pass their second try and is now a practicing CRNA, so don't be discouraged. 
the bottom two scores under pass are my C-score results. So if you ever lose that piece of paper they print out, you can know your scores by finding them on the NBCRNA. As far as what your scores need to be, if you are consistently scoring over 65% on the password protected exams, you're likely to pass boards. And I think it's 70% on the mock exams on Apex. I got that information from one of the founders of Apex. He was very active on the SRNA CRNA Facebook page and shared those statistics on there. I'm including a couple of screen grabs from the CRNA SRNA Facebook group that mentions the statistics I'm quoting and context. These screenshots are from 2022, so they were posted one and three years respectively. So the data may have changed since then. So as far as what are the most helpful resources? Well, that depends on what you like. I personally found Apex to be the best resource, hands down. I loved and still love Apex for the content and the questions. But honestly, board questions are a lot more like Prodigy. In fact, I had a couple of classmates say that they saw a couple of Prodigy questions on their boards. So I think Prodigy is definitely worth it for just the type of questions that you will be exposed to in the sheer volume of questions. They have like over 1,000 questions. I did not find their modules helpful at all in explaining the information. One tip is that a group of us split the bill on the shortage Prodigy subscription and use it amongst ourselves. I used an older version of Valley and I did not find it particularly helpful. I thought they displayed the material in too simplistic of a manner, but I think I did enjoy their equipment module. I had some friends that did not like Apex and used Valley when they could. So you really have to find what works for you. As far as other resources go, I made sure to do my daily anesthesia buddy questions on Instagram. He actually now has an Etsy store, but he didn't when I was in school, so I can't really speak on the quality of those questions. But I did really enjoy his Instagram questions. I didn't use core anesthesia, but I had some classmates that did, and they said it wasn't particularly helpful in preparing for the C or for boards, so I probably skipped that one. Also, I'll link the two question of the day resources down in the description that I used every single day. And what I did was I created a shortcut on my home screen of my phone. So that way I can just press on the question of the day and it'll pop up the first thing in the morning when I got to clinical. And I did the same thing on my desktop. But yeah, that's what my board prep journey looked like. Let me know if you guys have any questions or if you would like me to expand on any of the topics covered. I was thinking of maybe starting to do quick videos on specific cases that I had done that day and what you need to get ready and need to look for in those type of cases. Kind of like a surgical manual guide, but more realistic. Maybe some videos on room setup, what drugs to use when. Also, I'm starting my locums journey and hopefully I can provide some information on that for you guys if you would be interested. This is a very challenging journey, but the reward of being a licensed CRNA is so worth it. So don't give up. Just keep chipping away at it day by day. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you have a wonderful day.